Well, that's an interesting question, Matt, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, I mean, who is really hopeful of saving a deal that essentially the, the two main parties have agreed is defunct? I mean, certainly on the end of the United States, anyway, the GCPOA. And the question, of course, going forward is whether or not this is Trump foreign policy doctrine is really going to allow for that. It seems as if it's it's a lot of threat and then less action, and then a lot of threat and then less action, and, and really leaving a, a room on the table for something new, something as in terms of a new deal. Now, of course, on the face of it, the French officials have essentially said, hey, listen, we're very hopeful that we can move some pieces on the chessboard here that we can move the dialogue forward. But in reality, um, the Europeans don't really have that strong of a position here. I mean, they can at least potentially grease the wheels between the United States and Iran. But necessarily, it's it, what can they really do in terms of keeping a deal that's essentially dead on the table? One wonders. And then the Iranians, from what I can tell, are going to just continue uh, to put them squarely in the middle of this fight with the United States. And how much they can really achieve uh, in doing that is a bigger question, frankly. Um, because for the French, especially, I mean, this at the end of the day is about uh, pretty much keeping um, some leeway in the region, isn't it? And being able to continue to help uh, call some of these shots. But if it's, they're in the middle of a fight between the United States and Iran, um, you know, it's, it's a big question, Matt, about how much they can actually achieve there. Well, I just want to play you a clip from uh, Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, uh, speaking in the wake of these escalations uh, and about whether or not there could be further sanctions. Take a listen to what the Secretary of State had to say. You know the stories, but we've implemented the strongest pressure campaign in history against the Iranian regime, and we are not done. We've, we've cut off billions in funds that the Islamic Republic of Iran's leadership would have used for various nefarious purposes, not the least of which would have been their efforts to destroy the state of Israel. So Mike Pompeo there essentially saying that the U.S. is not done when it comes to sanctions on Iran amid these escalations. But I know that this is a question that, Hadley, you've been posing to uh, the Secretary, the Treasury Secretary, Stephen Mnuchin. How much more can the U.S. sanction Iran? This is a good, an excellent question, and uh, <laughs> Mr. Mnuchin ran away before he could actually give me any inkling as to what actually is left on the table there. But from the folks that I've been speaking to, former Treasury officials, and those who are really focused on these matters in terms of not just what's happening with Iran, but in terms of terror financing as well, I mean, they said that really there aren't that many more tricks in the bag when it comes to these kind of economic sanctions. Because you'll remember, of course, that Mr. Mnuchin had said we're almost at 100 percent in terms of what we can actually sanction coming out of Iran. And with the Iranians, essentially, saying, you know, we're going to continue uh, to increase the uranium enrichment every 30 to 60 days, depending on how long um, you guys allow this to go on. I mean, that's their threat to Europe. But I mean, threatening Europe really doesn't get them anywhere, does it? So this is the bigger question, isn't it? Does the United States have that much more to sanction um, before some sort of actual military action would have to be on the table? And then obviously they don't seem to want to go there. I mean, there's been significant provocation and the president has held back on that. So it's clear that uh, they would really like to get to the table before that actually happens. But as you see, back and forth between Tehran and Washington, the rhetoric continuing, one wonders who's going to give way first. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.